looks nice already. Big Boss opened the door again. Um, how's this wind sound? And the bells. Is it loud or is it not too loud? I feel like I need to maybe turn it down a little bit. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Hell's bells! Sounds good. Audio seems fine. Okay, let's check it out then. Read memo. Johnny Robin, archaeologist. Come boof! Archaeological, res arche archaeological research. Sell Tiberian relics. Austrian Spain. Uh, four months ago, several thousand year old stone inscription written in the Celt-Tiberian or Celt-Tiberian Celt -Tiberian language. Tanya, thank you for the resub! Uh, was found buried underneath an ancient but well-kept dolmen in the dolmen? What the fuck's that? In the area between Carcarena and Gijon. I can't, can't read any of these words. The inscription contained enough linguistic variants for researchers to extract a near complete translation of its contents. James A. Arn Arnfield, the archaeologist and Celtiberian researcher? Celtiberian. <laughs> Wait, it's Celtic. So, probably Celtiberian? <laughs> uh, found in the believes that the stone relic is the first piece of a bigger puzzle. He has specifically requested your assistance to aid in his research. You will be meeting up with James A. Arnfield and helping my name's Aaron A. Aronson. Helping him in his search for Celtiberian relics. Before we go into more details, I should warn you that James A. Arnfield Aaron A. Aronson has spent the better half of the past decade alone com combing the mountains of Asturias for Celtiberian remains. Sorry if I butcher any of these words. The time he has spent in isolation has affected his personality, giving him an assortment of quirks and odd behavioral traits that could put the most patient person on edge. However, I can personally- Jesus. Vouch for his professional work and his ability to get the job done when it counts. We finish reading this and then the game just ends. Like, this is the entire game. We're gonna, just gonna read a book for like an hour and a half. Disregard any oddball conspiracy theories he decides to share with you and remain focused on the task. We've arranged a temporary apartment for you to make sure to make use of before you head out to the field. Once you've arrived at the apartment, I will call your work phone and update you on the time and pace, place of your rendezvous with James A. Earnfield. And my name is Aaron A. Aronson. Paperwork, the game. <laughs> <laughs> the stone inscription is being hailed as a breakthrough discovery by some and nothing more than a future public museum ornament by others. James A. Earnfield believes that it is the former and I know from experience to trust his instant instincts. Translation of the inscription has tied together several loose ends in Celtiberian mythology, bringing light to a creature Yeli Orog. Yeli! He just says yeet all the time. Yeet yeet orc! Previously thought to be an insignificant character in the colossal world of Celtiberian deities. A dolmen is a type of single chamber megalithic tomb using consisting usually consisting of two or more vertical megaliths supporting a large flat horizontal capstone or table. Thank you, Dark Cat. <laughs> That's amazing. The relic tells the story that James believes is the Celtiberian foundation myth. Origin story of the Celtiber Celtiberian, Celtiberian people that explains where they came from. Inscription tells of the time when the world was inhabited by the Eucusis, Eucusis people. Yuk. <laughs> they just say yuk yuk. <laughs> that's their way of saying thanks. Yuk yuk. The description is reminiscent of the dwarves of ancient Germanic mythology, short and stocky with the thick gray beards and long gray hair. Jesus. Their skin color was a dark charred brown and their eyes entirely black. They lived on Earth for hundreds of thousands of generations spreading out to all corners of the planet. After so many generations of existence, the Yuk Yuk people learned to wield total control over their surroundings. <laughs> I should totally make a resub notification now that if someone resubscribes it, I just, it just has me going Yuk Yuk! <laughs> Sending the wind Sending the wind in the direction that they pleased and bringing down rain wherever it was, whenever it was needed. 
Eventually their power grew so great they learned to transcend their physical world altogether and so they began to learn of the unseen world around them. However, there was one member of the Yuk Yuk people that went too far into the unseen world. His name was Melmanzos, an alchemist who lived alone in the Yusazulajaba mountain next to the village of Drevajabambam. Melmanzos was an unnaturally malevolent member, Jesus, I'm too tired for this, of the Yuk Yuk race. He did not follow the rules. Tweet when you finish reading this. I already tweeted. Why is everyone saying I should retweet when I already did? Um, there was one member of the Yuk Yuk people that went too far into... The, oh yeah, we read that one. One day he shouted from the mountains that he had opened the portal to the higher realm. One where a powerful creature named Yeli Oryk lived. He claimed that Yeli Oryk was sleeping, but after many years of study he had discovered the right words to open the gateway to his world and awaken him. This was the last time that Mel Manzos was heard from for the next 500 years. Time went by and his name became a faint memory only remembered by the most elderly members of the village near the mountain. One morning, 500 years later, the people of Trebavezos woke to the sound of mad. A mayad. Shrieking, coming from underneath their houses. A group of men began to dig and continued digging for several days following the screaming to its source. Claire, thank you so much for the sub. Ah, so many new people today. Thank you, thank you. A group of men began to dig. <laughs> Finally, they came upon a casket made of a material found nowhere on earth. How did they know that? It was gray and sturdy like stone, but had a natural luminance so strong that it nearly blinded the diggers. Engraved on the casket was a horrid scene of twisted bodies and strange creatures, the likes of which the townspeople could never have imagined. The most prominent engraving was of a beast-like creature with two great horns extending from its head. One of the diggers put his ear to the casket and claimed that he could hear the screaming of an untold number of souls, much like how one can hear the ocean by putting their ear to a conch shell. Well, we know that's not true. One of the diggers became determined to open the casket, closing his eyes to avoid being blinded and slowly push pushing the casket's lid to the side. Once opened, the great luminance of the casket faded to a dull glow, and the crying of the souls faded. From inside the vessel of the diggers, then from inside the vessels, the diggers then pulled up the naked body of Melmanzos, who appeared to be in a state of deranged bliss. He was carried into the center of town, where he was recognized by one of the elders. Melmanzos shouted out that he had been reborn and given immortality by Yeli Oryk, and that Yeli Oryk, or Yeli. Uh, it could spare him from the coming darkness. He said that Yelai Org had chosen someone in the town as a vessel for his soul so that he may leave the world of the unseen and enter the physical world. Oh my god, it's never gonna end. At that moment, a great earthquake occur occurred. The people of the town left Melmanzos and sought shelter for the great rocks of the Useizumelmu mountain were now falling from the sky. The earthquake lasted until late into the night when it, would, when it abruptly stopped and gave the townspeople time to emerge from their hiding places. The people counted the injured and made note of the damage done. All the people of the town were accounted for except for one, a young child named Bansos who had disappeared. The townspeople searched everywhere but the child was nowhere to be found. To be fair though, it's really well written. Like, it's, it, can you imagine having to read through all of this and then the English being super bad? One day later, the child was found lying on his bed, the same place he was last seen. He said that before the earthquake came, he heard voices telling him that he needed to escape. He said that he tried to run, but a great fairy hole opened in the ground and consumed him. He said that he was taken to a strange realm where he wandered for many days until he found a portal that led him back to his bed. A few hours later, the boy began to see visions of hideous monsters and malicious creatures. He screamed out for help as these invisible entities attacked him again and again. Another day passed and the child's condition was getting worse. The tone of his voice had started to deepen and two pointed horns were emerging from his head. Demon child. His face had taken an elongated form and near pitched black color. Uh, he's turning into a goat. The next day the child began chanting mantras in a language unknown to the Yuxus Yukyuk people. <laughs> his body now resembled the engraving scene on the casket where Men Melmanzos was found. And all around him was the sound of tortured souls screaming. This is more than I read during last semester. 
<laughs> the town was now empty. All of the people had fled after seeing the terrible creature that young Bansus had become. All of them except Mel Manzos, who spent his days praying and repeating the mantras of the creature. Meh. The fleeing people found their safety short-lived. The temperature of Earth started to become unbearably hot. Oh, that's, that's the current day. No matter where the people fled, they could hear the distant screaming of tortured souls and dark mantric chatting, chanting. Yeah, that's us screaming in agony for, because of this heat. Eventually, the sun stopped rising, leaving the earth in a constant state of darkness. The child's body had been used as a vessel to bring Yilai Orog, the great and powerful creature that Melmanzos claimed to have awoken, into the earthly realm. Eli Oryx's physical form continued to grow bigger and stronger, and he walked the earth, spreading his power until darkness was everywhere. The only sound of Yuk-Yuk people could hear was the shrieking of tortured souls and the mantras chanted by Eli Oryx. Yuk-Yuk people descended into chaos and began killing each other in the most horrific and appalling ways in an attempt to appease Eli. Eventually, Earth's population dwindled down to a single person, Melmanzos, who had brought the great creature into this world. Oh, okay. He spent his days praying and chanting the Chi Yilai, unaffected by the horror of the darkness around him. Why are we reading the story again? <laughs> oh my god. However, there was a tribe of Yuk Yuk people that lived isolated, isolated deep beneath the Earth's surface who were not affected by Earth's happenings. Wait, so the man guy is not the last person on Earth? They were a tribe of 20 people, 10 men and 10 women. Their skin was pale from never seeing the sun and their eyes were accustomed to darkness. They lived so deep under the earth that neither the hideous sound of the tortured souls nor the chanting of Yilai could reach them. These people carried with them a golden orb that they worshipped. They, the orb shimmered perpetually with light and any of the tribe members would give their life to defend it. The orb had passed down over 100,000 generations and the members of the tribe would pass it down for 100,000 more if need be. They did not know the orb's purpose, but they believed it was their fate to carry it to its final destination. Holy shit, this is a long bit. Earthquakes were frequent on Earth now, occurring nearly constantly over all over the planet. One day, the ground above the pale-skinned people split open with a mighty roar, and the sound of the tortured souls was now finally able to reach them. Clutching, into, clutching onto the great orb, they began to follow the sound of the crying souls upward through the newly formed chasm. Paigey! Ah, thank you for the sow! Where are you guys all coming from? So many new people! Thank you! Um... Let's see... They climbed and climbed and finally reached the Earth's surface. They were filled with the smell of burning ember and shocked by the constant sound of tortured souls and chanting. They followed the horrible sound of the souls for many days and the sound grew louder and louder as the tribe got closer to its origin. <sighs> Finally, they arrived at the Usei Zumelmu mountain, where the sound reached a deafening pitch. The pale-skinned tribe climbed the mountain until they found the source of the crying souls, an enchanted stone used by Mel Manzos. I'll just call him Mel from now on. To open the original portal, the tribe spent many days studying and finally discovered the right words to summon the portal. All 20 members of the tribe entered the gateway, dutifully carrying the orb with them and arrived in a world of the unseen. For the next thousand years, the tribe wandered in this foreign realm, using the light of the orb to lead them closer to the source of the crying souls. They passed through areas of unknown evil and strangeness, and saw sights that no language has the cap capacity to describe. They finally reached the source of the crying and shrieking. It was a giant circle of souls, spinning slowly and melting inwards from the center. The tribe could see millions of screaming faces and twisted bodies in a state of perpetual torture and pain. This circle contained the souls of every person who had ever lived, along with the spirits of all animals and the life force of all trees and plants. All of existence was being sucked into the circle, eternally being dragged towards its fairy melting center. The twenty members of the Paleskin tribe knew instinctively what they needed to do. They each put their right hand onto the great orb and pushed it upward above them. A great light began to shine from the orb, illuminating the darkness all around them. The orb began to float upward on its own, higher and higher. Let me catch my breath for a sec. <laughs> How do blind people study an orb? Good question. <sighs> okay. 
Uh, the pale skin tribe fell down in exhaustion, watching as the orb slowly flew towards the center of the melting circle. The orb reached the center of the circle and exploded into a giant ray of blinding golden light. The sound of the magnificent, magnificent burst drowning out the dirge of the tortured souls. Bok, thank you! Holy shit, you guys! Uh, for a hundred years, the pale skin tribe basked in the exploding light of the orb, watching with amazement as it dismantled the melting circle soul by soul. The souls of mankind were returned to the heavens. The forest was replenished with trees. The rivers once more flowed with water. And the twenty members of the tribe returned to the surface of earth. The orb's light banished Eli from this realm and put him under a spell of eternal sleep. Mel, still immortal from Eli's gift, was exiled high in the mountains where he would spend the rest of eternity long and alone and deranged, and was made mute so that he could never speak the words to awaken Eli again. That's good. Twenty members of the pale skin tribe repopulated the world over many thousands of years. Oh, incest! Eventually spreading to all corners of the earth. This is the origin myth of the Celt Tiberian people. They believed that they were the descendants of the original tribe. Twenty tribe members that used to orb to banish Eli from our realm. Conclusion. <sighs> Once your plane reaches Asturias, secure a taxi to your temporal, uh, temporary apartment. Okay, we're back to we're back to in-game real life. <laughs> I was like, wait, they had a taxi back in the day. <laughs> Why didn't they just take a taxi to the mountain? Secure a taxi to your temporary apartment and wait for my call. I have faith that James A. Earnfield is correct in his assumption that the stone inscription is only the first piece of a greater puzzle. With a little luck and hard work, you may have the opportunity to be a part of a tremendous archaeological discovery. Holy shit, that was a lot of reading. Okay. And now, chapter two. <laughs> This is really cool. I like this. Are you sure it's not too loud? It sounds really loud to me. Kitchen. Oh! And we have that exact same IKEA lamp. Let's look outside. What country is this? Is it maybe like Poland or something? Let's go to the kitchen. Phone? Where is it? It's not here. Oh, it is. Maybe it's in the bedroom? It's coming for you. Really loud, though. Music. 
That's better. Is that... wait. Is that Eli then? Oh my god, it's pitch black. Oh, light switch. Was he standing there? This is really cool. It's really well done so far. Okay, let's see. Should we go check? Door's locked. 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 We're in Silent Hill. No, oh, everything was locked. Maybe something here? No? Wait, then what do I do? <laughs> Close the door. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I'm changing colors. <laughs> um, do you think changing the color changes things here? There's this thing. Wait, was it on blue already? Um. Oh. Uh. I don't know if I want to enter the hole, honestly. I guess I don't have a choice. Or did they crawl out of the hole? Oh. That's pretty nice. I don't see anything. Can I go there? I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Change the light on the thingy. Maybe the hole's different? How do I go back up? Now I can enter. Do I have a flashlight? It's not a very good one. I can just barely make out certain things. Here's something weird. Oh, we're in the same kind of the same area. Okay. 
Can't I walk down there? Oh, there. I don't know what that does, but... Something on the wall now. Oozing down. Wait, so I switch between night and day, sort of? What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> oh, shit. So you go down there and you switch the thing and then it lets you go to night and day, basically? I can't enter it now, I have to change the light of the circle. I got a flashlight, but... How did I get here to begin with? I went through some door? I don't think I can find my way back. Yeah, so this switches it to night. And then we pick up the flashlight kind of orb thing. So there's something we gotta find here that we haven't seen yet. I, th I guess. I could uh, up the brightness for you a little bit. Let me see. Um, what is that again? Should be a thing for that. Color correction, maybe? Yeah. Maybe up the brightness a little bit. Maybe you can max the brightness to cheat. Uh, nah. Okay, I made it brighter now. Oh yeah, now you can definitely see better. You can see it better than I can. <laughs> Just so let me know if you see anything. So it's basically just giving you li night and day versions, and then you might be able to see something in the in the day version that helps you look around, maybe? Oh! So I need to find more of those? Well, there's that one. Do I need to fill multiple ones? <laughs> Prehistoric drawing of a rock on a rock. <laughs> the rockception. Should we do it again now? I think it's only one. So should we go back then? Nothing seems to have changed here.
Uh, whenever we go back to the light version, I'm just like, ah, my eyes. So where do we find the drawing? Oh, there, I guess. Interesting. Attack the strange stargate. I was thinking portal. <laughs> That's straight up the portal from Doctor Strange. It could be. He could just have borrowed that. Oh, I'm probably... This is probably gameplay. Although I'm just a mouse, though. Not a pointer. I can't really click on anything. Sound's definitely going somewhere. We're just going from place to place. Bye, Alice! See you later! We're back! Uh, Johnny! We've been calling you all morning. Where have you been? There has been an ch unfortunate change of plans. James A. Arnfield was found this morning by Spanish police trapped in some type of stone container buried under the dolmen where the inscription was recovered. Police reported that he was found naked and in a state of panic, screaming non-stop for hours. We have no explanation for his behavior. We can only believe that so many years isolated in the mountains we have finally got to him. And he cracked. He's being vigil vigilantly watched in the nearby hospital while receiving treatment for trauma. I called the hospital to find out what happened, but the doctor in charge was as confused as I was. He informed me that James is in a state of psychosis and is non-communicative, speaking in a gibberish that no one can make heads or tails of. In the last hour, we briefly reconnect received a series of GPS pings from his phone. Location showing us a mountain range, us a mountain range, near the town of Felejosa. We need you to hike up there and recover his mobile device and see if you can figure out what f triggered his frenzy. It's difficult for me to believe that he made the trip from Felejosa to the Dolmen without a reason. Something must have happened. Close. Okay, so we can just leave? Guess not! Curthy, good night! I wonder what this is trying to do. Is it transporting us or are we just super high right now or... What's that? What is it? You went insane! You began chanting mantras in an unknown language and watched as two horns grew out of your head. Wait, does this put me all the way- Okay, I'm now back in the beginning. Good. Should I just try and get out then? Or is this a gun? Where is he? Give me a second, dude! Jesus! So there's a dude there. I grab this. I go back. Ah. He went poof! So I have a gun with me now? If I do not click on any cute doggos. Or they go poof.
So, the, okay, the sound is that there's a dude and I need to find him. I can't find him. Oh my god. It gives me like two seconds to find the thing. Okay, where the fuck... What was it even? That's really hard to find. <sighs> what do I do? Fuck off! Where are you? How can you go insane if you can't see what you're afraid of? I can't even- ah! Okay, this is fucking frustrating. I can't even tell what I'm being afraid of. How can you then go insane? I can't see it! Oh no! Okay, where was it? Two to the right? Okay. Office, and then there's something. Where, though? Like, what am I missing? Where the fuck is it? Are you guys seeing it, or...? I can find those, but... I just don't see the... Maybe he's behind me? Maybe he's behind me. Maybe I need to turn around. There's two. Excuse me? Okay. I tried turning to the right. I'll try turning to the left again. I'm really not seeing it. Maybe after you kill the one it's near where you first check? Maybe go back? Try the ceiling? I don't think I can look up. Hey, Psychotic! Thank you so much for the three months! Thank you! So you're thinking maybe go to the kitchen Maybe Fritz can tell in the guide where it is. The Russian video guide. Mm, it's not in front of us. Oh! <gasps> I got it! It was the fucking TV. <sighs> okay, so it's... Go into the office, two clicks to the left, click on the head, two, four clicks, three clicks to the right, click on the TV. <sighs> okay. So what are we doing? We're just exterminating our house? Sort of? I can't even tell, like, where the fuck is the door? How do I click to go out of here? I can't even find the exit anymore. Ah, that's better. This is what this room looked like, right? we need a 
Please hear the lights working. So I also have to just click on random things in case it's not indicated. Okay. Whew. That really tested my patience. These darkness bits needs to be crazy improved. Otherwise, this game is gonna get really, really bad reviews, I'm sure. Your health! Oh my god! So low! 438 subscribers! Holy fuck! Okay, this is not too dark. That's good. We can walk down there. That's about it. Can't really- oh, there's a backpack there. Found his phone. That was easy. Check the weather. 36F. That's really cold, isn't it? Carnival's almost here. For thousands of years we have worshipped the Great Spirit and prayed- I, I thought it said sprayed- prayed for help finding the ancient words that will awaken him once again. The prayers of the elders have not gone unnoticed, it seems. Next to the stone inscription buried under the dolmen was a second stone tablet that I kept secret from the world. Ashed into the tablet was an ancient map showing the location of a tomb buried deep within the mountain now referred to as Tia Tordos, near the village of Sobrefos. I had remembered that the people of Sober would never let their children climb the nearby Tiet mountain. They claimed that a beast lived inside. Oh, you want to check the drink? Oh, don't pick me up! Do you want to cuddle? No. Hello? She doesn't really want to cuddle today. Oh, let me go! Oh! She ran off with my uh, earbuds. Okay. If you get too close to its resting place, it would bang furiously and shake the ground beneath you. The banging was said to cause permanent insanity to those who listened listen long enough. Indeed, it was in this mountain that I eventually found Mel trapped inside a stone prison, deranged and in a dazed, dazed stupor, stupor for, from so many long years spent in isolation. Mel was of no use in his deteriorated state, but it appeared that he had crudely etched a series of unknown symbols into his stone prison many eons ago. The elders were ecstatic with my findings and they were... I just heard a kitty put her nails in the green screen. That's not allowed. Uh, ecstatic with my findings and they were certain that these are the ancient words that must be said outside the holy grounds to open the portal. They have transliterated the symbols as Shaba Shaba Kalaku Yeli. Uh, all the pieces of the puzzle will soon be in place. The elders have located a suitable vessel for his arrival. Quiet. Go. Be gone. Leave me in peace. <sighs> okay. <sighs> I have requested his presence near the sacred grounds. When the vessel is within the holy parameters, I will actively activate the gateway, enter into the next realm. The world is blind to his presence, but that will soon change. Those that were aware could always feel his influence in this realm. Mankind may have forgotten him, but the eternal earth remembers him. 
The wind still cries when you call out his name. When y'all call out his name? And the mountains still rumble when you speak of him. If one spends enough time alone in the mountains, they will begin to hear it too. The shrieking of the wind will whisper frightful things into the, their ear, and the creaking of the trees will sound like a sullen dirge. I will awaken him and invite him once more into our realm, as it was before and as it will be again. So, uh, his battery is almost done. Makes sense. So, I wonder if he already did that. If that's why he went crazy. Speak. Oh, do we want to type in those words from the phone? Um, this one? Shaba shaba kalaku yeli or kalaku. Shaba shaba. Wait, let me type it in the chat. Shaba shaba kalaku yeli orok kalaku. Okay. Try that. What? Huh. Someone's staring at me. There we go. That tiny hole? Are we gonna fit in that? Well, let's go for it. Hello! Look at the phone background. The two dudes? You mean? Is that where I came from? Big eyeball? Oh! Uh... Was, what am I doing? I pasted the same sentence. Wait, do I have to... Oh! This is everything that I pasted. Should we just try and copy them? I did see that one, that we... the first one. This one. Maybe we're making a new word? Okay, so I'll try all the letters. So that's an O, I see. That was a J. OJ! OJP? Did we have the other one already? I don't remember. OJL? Okay, the other one I must have already been by. Oh, there. That's it, though. I'll copy that. What did I say? OJP something. <laughs> Oh, where'd that one come from? Oh, that's nothing. Mm. Maybe you can put it in the phone? No, I can't add things to it.
Paleo, Kima, and Iker about which costumes they are going to wear this year. Kima has an invisible friend and he gave us the idea. Paravia, busy preparing their costumes, spoke with local children. I don't know. Kima, maybe? The three costumes find the symbols. What? Octopus man, dancing skeleton with a head and a castle piece from chess? So there's a symbol that looks like an octopus man? That one. The king. In Japanese. Thank you, Gr <laughs> Thank you, Fruits, that helped. Double E. So now what? We can still type something else? So oh, there's more. <laughs> the Russian translator. <laughs> yeah. Um. So now we have the three dancers, but who's up top? That's also like I. How? How the hell? Can you know that from this piece you need, to f you need to find the symbols that coincide with what some kid is dressing up as for carnival? The fuck? Maybe Kima? Oh, it's a CH. Yeah. Says, eh. Go back out of the hole. Okay. Huh. I just ate a mushroom. That's a bad idea, dude. Oh, there's nothing else I could have done. The dev had to tell the Russian guy in, s in stream. Oh, really? That's too bad. Like, yeah, it's super vague. There's no hints at all, or whatever. Like, how are you supposed to get that? Oh, cool. I'm the last descendant. Don't stare at this too long or you, you won't be able to find your way back. Galoo, good night! Set us free. That burning circle where people were in pain? Oh no. How do you remember that? Rain, hook hand, something. The great circle code for pizza. <laughs> In my world, yeah. Okay, oh, we got it. it it's it, They put it on a note, so we don't have to worry about forgetting. That's good. So you ate some mushrooms, you tripped out. Oh, this is back in the hole. Wait, should I just do the whole thing again then? Was it numbers? I forgot already. There it is. 
Um, then the hook hand. Here, thank you! There it is. So it's numbers. I think it was zero, that last one. Oh, nine. Okay. Now we go out again. Whoop. This is all pretty cool, but holy shit, that bit with the shooting the aliens really pissed me off. It should give you like, instead of two seconds, it should have given you like fucking two minutes to find the source for each room. Like if you die after two minutes, I kind of understand not being able to find your way and you're taking too long, but two seconds? <sighs> This is it, though. I'm gonna be mildly disappointed. Yeah, that was bad game design. Oh, Big Boss. Why are you so cute? My prince. Okay. Huh. That's a symbol. Should we try and remember that? It kind of reminds me of um, an alien from a movie. What is it? Uh, I don't remember which movie though. But okay, I'll remember it now. Okay. Oh, phone. <laughs> War of the Worlds? Maybe. Hey, dude! What's up? That's pretty loud. Um, can't pick it up. Oh, oh man. Wild Field View Summer Triangle by ESA. Huh. Oh. Now playing Vane. Oh, the song? It's really loud. That was short. Um, let me just turn the volume down more. Okay, that's better. I just want to quickly collect my thoughts before we move on to the next game, but um, 
I thought it had some cool elements. Like, I'd be totally into this game if it fixed those two major gameplay problems. Um, that whole section with the fucking weird creatures that you're shooting, just delete the whole thing. Just skip it. Like, no one will miss it. Game's like two bucks, yeah, yeah. You can just do without that whole section, and it doesn't matter. It just needs, like... Instead of giving you a nine-page file in the beginning of the game, just spread it out throughout the game. Just give, give like, a little bit of story each time, so that we more and more understand what is what. Like, have us go through the hole in the ground, and then afterwards find a file that explains what it is, and then we're like, oh, we were going here and here. Uh, there's like, there's a lot of ways he can reshape what he already has into a better game, if that makes sense. That whole section with the shooting is just really, really weird and not explained. It's totally out of context. How the fuck does he has a, have a weird gun all of a sudden that he can use? And if he doesn't see them in like two seconds, he dies. If he wants to leave it in, then at least make it so that it's like two minutes, you know, until you die. Because it needs to be way more forgiving. The the fun just got sucked out immediately after dying like that five times. Yeah, exactly. Like if he reworks it, if he makes the pacing better, if he like puts the story more spread out through the game instead of like all at the beginning, and he needs a proper hint for the the bit in the cave with the symbols. If that that random symbol thing that was like. P, L, K, whatever. If he changed that word to costumes, then it's totally good. Then you have some idea what you need to do. Then you know the carnival section is important, etc. The lore wasn't even too bad, yeah. The story was pretty good. I liked the whole... That was probably the most fun part, the na reading the nine pages at the beginning about how the world got created. That was actually the most, most interesting part. Or just the word carnival, yeah, exactly, to point you in the right direction. But they didn't do that. Yeah. Like, I want to like it, and I feel like... I really liked the look of the game, too. Except for the really, really dark part, the cave, that just needs to be way brighter. Um, the, not the cave, the rock formation at, at this, on the, at the sea. Like, that just needs to be way brighter. That was just stupid. Couldn't find my way around. If we cut out those parts where we got stuck, this game's probably only like an hour long, I'd say. Maybe an hour ten. Which is fine for what we paid for it, but... Th this is the kind of game that makes me kind of angry because I feel like it's close to becoming a good game, but they kind of just fucked up essential parts. And it's just a way, yeah, not a waste, but it's a shame that he didn't make it. And that kind of pisses me off. Like, I, I always get a little bit angry when a game is, like, really close to being good, but it didn't make it. <laughs> and I'm always just like, if only he did this and this, it would have been so much better, you know? It's a gem in the rough, not a masterpiece in the making. Ooh, Hikulopa. That's a good one. Damn. The story was interesting, but the gameplay was awful. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, he has the right ideas. He just needs to, like, look at how a game is actually made and follow that and not do this. <sighs> or just give us more of the dude that was, like, uh, the dude that got picked up by the police who got- who went all crazy. I would have liked to, to see more of where he did his research or something. Show us like a cave with a tent in it or something. You know? Just like more of that. More of investigating what happened to the dude and why he went crazy. Uh, what he did, because apparently he died- he tried to do something and he woke up in a- in, in one of the graves. There's a lot of stuff he could easily do by just adding a couple more pictures, you know? That kind of makes it a shame, because it feels like it's only a little bit more work to make a really interesting, cool little game. And he just really slipped up on certain parts. <laughs>